I don't know if this is recording or not. It seems to be. Hello, viewers. Today I'm talking to you after a long hiatus from video taking. And I'm here to tell you, um, I've had friends say, well, now that you've got COVID, you should talk about it. You should, people asking, what is it like? Let me tell you, um, COVID ain't any fun. COVID ain't any fun. Just sitting up in this chair is taking a Herculean effort. The joint pain, you know, people say if you've ever had the flu, COVID is pretty, will be pretty similar. No, there is no flu on this earth that is anything like what this COVID is like. It is the most painful and debilitating ailment you'll get, even if your symptoms are quote unquote mild. I'm only able to talk to you guys now a week or two after, well, not quite two weeks. See, I got this on the 5th, that's when it started, and it started with mild symptoms, and it's true, it kind of resembles a cold or flu when you first get it, you know, you start having a little breathing related, this, that, and the other, <clears throat> but very quickly, it starts to differentiate itself from the flu. It's just talking right now, my throat, it, there's this thing, it's like a reflex that it does, Breathing capacity, I'm not in that shortness of breath area. The way it, it gets you, at least the way it's getting me, is when I cough, I have the capacity in here to cough. I don't have the power delivery. It's like it does something with your, your wiring in here. When you try to cough instead of, whew, you know, and you, you can just fully discharge your lungs. It's more like, whew. It like makes you it makes you heave. It's the weirdest thing, and all the time when you're talking anything involving the movement of air, right here, it's like you got this hand and it's right here, and it's like, <laughs> you know, just constantly. Some days are better than others with it. Like today, you'll be waking up with these horrible, horrible coughing fits. You'll be retching. It's very hard to keep yourself, even breathing, you'll want to retch. This, that reflex or whatever it is in there, it's like, you'll be like, <sighs> you know, you're sitting there trying to stop it, you know, because you know, if you let it take over, you're going to be retching and there's nothing to cough out. You know, I've been working hard to keep that crap out of my chest. <coughs> See, like there, <clears throat> all I can do is like a... <clears throat> And it does produce sometimes. You get something out. I thank my lucky stars. I'm not in the position. Hopefully will not be in the position where I have to sit in a hospital on a ventilator. That's pretty much death at that point. You can kiss your ass goodbye. But there's been some times. You know, there's been some times I thought I was going to die. Because you feel... And you literally are at times. You're on the edge of suffocation. And then it, it, it eases back. You have this big fit and all this shit and anxiety and shit. And then it eases back. And it goes, ah. But it's like that, you know, it's like that. Or it's like you got a big vice around your entire neck. You know, big vice around your entire neck the whole time you've got this thing. Hard as hell to get stuff that falls down in there out because it will not allow you to develop the power to push all that stuff out. You've got the capacity in there, but you don't have the power behind it because it's like a weird over-regulation of output because the harder you push, the harder you push, the tighter it clenches down. It's almost like, you know, when you feel like you're going to throw up and all this down here in your torso goes, only this up in here goes, so you're like heaving. 
and it's accomplishing nothing. But eventually, eventually through gravity and rolling around and positioning your lungs by positioning your body, you eventually get that shit out and it comes out. But God, it's, it's the worst sickness I've had in my entire life. And I've had a lot. I've had a lot of flus. I pretty much get the flu every time it comes around unless I get a shot. Oh, it's trying even right now. It's trying to clench down on me. <clears throat> you, go, you go to do any kind of work. Forget doing work in the house while you have this of any meaningful amount or even getting properly dressed most times because just hoisting them socks up your up your calves, you know, pulling them socks up, you know, getting down there to get them, it feels like somebody's punched you in the in the gut, you know, or just knocked the wind out of you. You have no to do anything other than basic stuff requires massive amounts of just getting winded, you know, just massive amounts of effort. It's getting better. I'm in I'm in the beginning of, of week two now. And uh other things I discovered that was that was never told to any so like I said, don't believe anybody that says, Oh, it's like getting the flu. Fuck you. It is not. This thing can kill you, man, and you can feel it killing you. You have to work every day to keep it from killing you. You have to come up with ways to keep your breathing going and keep yourself, you know, functional. Because uh, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. You'll be looking up all kinds of different treatments, you know, ways that people have treated similar things before. A lot of it related to breathing. I mean, shit tons of it related to breathing. But that's not the only place it gets you. When it first kicked in, and this has been the way it's been, you have to be careful the positions you sit in and, and whatnot because not only are you having trouble breathing and that thing clenches every time you position yourself weird, your blood pressure goes nuts. Man, like the first couple of nights, my head's like, ee, 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 and I thought I was going to have a stroke, man. I've never had my blood pressure that high. And in this, in this ear right here, you could hear a you know, it's it's fixed itself finally. I'm starting to come around the corner. I hope. I hope there's some new hope there's not some new weird fucked up symptom that gets revealed. But uh yeah, you're hearing loud noises and things. You're hearing rings all the time, but loud noises are exceptionally loud. And normal noises go off into the haze. You know, you'll miss a lot of what people say to you. <clears throat> you know, processing a voice, very difficult. The other thing I discovered, and I just discovered it uh, within the last couple of days. I'm more light sensitive. Already as an albino, I'm already light sensitive. But even looking at this screen hurts. Um, went out to take the garbage out, had to put on the super darks, the super darks, that's the only way I go outside now, can't do it with any other pair of glasses, thank you Amazon, these are awesome sunglasses, the best I've ever got for this, but basically you have to wear glasses on the same level as when you go to the eye doctor, you know those super dark things they put on you, so yeah, that's pretty rough, just talking, Talking here to you guys is taking monumental effort. Monumental effort. And I got a notification. Must remember to put phone in airplane mode next time I do this. But yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Don't ever, it's sure as hell not fake. You know what, what, what blows my mind? There are people right now by the thousands in deathbeds. These are nurses are telling these stories. They're dying believing that the disease is not real. They cannot believe what is actually happening to them. So people on their deathbeds cussing, wailing, and angry because they cannot believe it's real, but yet here it is happening to them. Don't think it can happen to you? 
We observed a lot of precautions. We tried to hold out. Me and Allison both are very sick. We tried to hold out by following all the mandates. Wear your mask. Clean your hands. Stay six feet from, from other people that you don't know. Be sure of the people that you do know. You know, still caught it. We got it right as this upward surge began. You know, and I was like, oh, well. On the upside of it, they're starting to find out that, yeah, just like other corona-type viruses like colds and flus and such, you have immunity after you get it. You know, you have your antibodies and you have all these other things. So, hey, man, I make it through. I'm going to be tougher than hell. I'm going to get a tattoo made. I'm going to get a tattoo made. I, I survived it naturally. Yeah. See what happens when you're strong? So anyway, get through it and uh, be careful, man. Don't don't fall for that redneck no mask bullshit. Oh, it's it's control. Let me tell you, would you rather control your your situation or would you rather have the virus control you? Because I can tell you from experience right now, the virus controlling you is a hell of a lot worse than wearing that little paper mask or that cloth mask you know and plus those masks work out for a lot of other things i found that mowing the grass with it i didn't get sick it's great for preventing allergy related things so i just started wearing it as a due course i always felt better when i did because i was always allergy prone anyway so you know now people don't look at you like a kook when you're walking around with something like that on your face Remember, police used to come and put you at gunpoint for walking around in like a bank with a mask. You can go in a bank with a mask now and nobody thinks twice, you know. But back in the day, you walked in there with that thing on your face. They'd have you down on the ground with your hands behind your back with a zip cord around your wrists. 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 Muddle-headedness. Muddle-headed thinking. That's another one. Man, just the order of operations, processing, procedural thought. Those are things, just forget it. You get this, it's out the window. I've been fighting and fighting to keep my mind straight since I caught this. It does something to you. You're like, blah, 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 blah. you think you're talking coherently and that your plan is coherent and well put together. But the people around you are looking at you like you're a dumbass because you don't even realize it's either the hypoxia or the brain fog this crap causes. You know, it's going away as I'm getting better. My procedural organization is improving, but it isn't a hundred percent. But you'll sure as hell know. You'll sure as hell know. The first thing you'll notice is your mind is not is not all there. It's it's off somewhere. You're not completely coherent. So, yeah. Haven't had the shortness of breath to the point of suffocating and having to call the ambulance so I can go to the hospital and die. But I tell you, man, sometimes I've wondered. I've, I've had bad flus and I've had bad colds. But I've never had anything like this. Never in my life. Be careful. And, you know, it's kind of like, eat well, exercise, live clean, die anyway. Yeah, well, that's true. But, you know, you can go through life miserable or you can go through life in relative comfort, you know. You know, you owe it to yourself to take care of yourself. You know, fuck all the rest of it. Do the science, you know, wear your mask, clean your hands, stay away from dirty people, you know. Well, we do find out, and this is going to say a lot about it. A lot of these people that you're seeing getting sick in this in the surge, guess who they were? They don't know where to go. They go mask. Government conspiracy. Oh, is that why you're laying in that bed half dead now? Yeah, I know quite a few of them, and that's where they are now. Coronavirus knows no politics. You're going to catch it if you don't watch yourself. 
it's just like anything else, you know. What do I think is going to happen in the future? I think we're going to have coronavirus shots, just like you have a flu shot. I think it's going to be an inevitability. Who, who or whatever released this into the environment has created a cycle now because they're already in Denmark, they're seeing mutations. I think uh, in Australia and in the beginning stages in China, they're starting to see mutations of this. It's also the one, the common one that we all have now. Apparently it's zoonotic because in Denmark, the first mutation, it was from humans to minks. The disease that, that I and many, many millions of others have now has jumped a species gap over to minks. Denmark called their entire industry, their entire mink population, you know, and these farms, they've called them or are calling them right now because they don't want the mutation to get out. You know, they've already had two or three cases they found where it's jumped back to humans. So yeah, this ain't no bullshit. This is nothing to sneeze at. I was already wary of it, and I already was trying to warn people about the uh, dangers of this, simply because of the science of it, long before I ever caught it. I haven't changed my tune. I'm confirming. If you think this is fake, why don't you come over here and let me give you a big hug. Hug. And uh, how you doing? So, yeah, stay way the hell away from somebody who's uh, coughing right now because that's the primary way it gets around. They're also finding out things about dogs. Apparently dogs can carry it around with them too. So people who have dogs, they have a 78% chance, higher chance of catching it than people who don't. Not with cats or birds or other animals, only dogs. So I think it's more than just you know, there's there's something to it, because uh, you know you got to live clean when you're sick like this. Come on, and believe me, every little thing sets it off. We got HEPA filtration running in this place. I wish we had more, but bringing that load down, scrubbing those little scrubbing those little spiky beach balls out of the air, you know, so that you don't have to deal with it again by it coming back around and you re inhale it. And I'm getting a phone call, so I'm going to let you guys go. Take care.